Welcome back, y'all. This is Lesson 5, and today we're starting on the first of what I call the big three traditional tin whistle Irish ornaments, the cut, the tap, and the roll. And today we're starting with the cut, so stick around. Before we jump in with exactly how to do a cut, let's talk a little bit about why. With the whistle, we don't have a lot of volume control. When you're playing, say, the note D, you can't really make that louder, because if you try to just blow harder, what happens? Well, it jumps the octave. So you don't have a whole lot of room to adjust your volume. That is where ornaments come in. They give the effect of strengthening or, or making certain notes louder just by way of accenting them with a little short embellishment, a little short grace note. And it sort of tricks the listener's ear into thinking that those notes are louder, when really they're just accented with that grace note. A cut is always done with a note above the main melody note that you're playing. So let's say we'll just pick one, we'll play, pick the note G, since it's right smack in the middle of the whistle. If you're going to cut with that, I would do it with the ring finger. I would do it with this finger, and I'll kind of explain why in a second, but here's the gist of here's what it's supposed to sound like. Just a little kind of a blip, not a specific melody note. You're not hearing the actual note A that I'm playing. That would be slow enough so you could hear it. So ultimately you want it to be pretty quick where it is just an accent. Now, why did I pick this finger to use to make that accent? Well, the short answer in my case is a little, is a little simple. I always use this finger for all of the notes on the lower half of the whistle. For example, All done with the same finger. That's not to say that that's the right way to do it or the only way to do it. It's definitely not. I've worked with several folks who, who use the, the finger above, always the finger above the main melody note. So, for example, so in that case you're always using the one right above the main melody note that you're playing. That's another way to do it. My advice in this case is to try it Try a couple of different options and see what works for you. So the first homework assignment is just that. Figure out what works the best when you're trying to make these cuts. And I would recommend trying it a few different ways. You can try my way using just this finger. Or use whichever finger you want to try. I figure all of our brains are wired a little bit differently. So what works for you might not work for me and vice versa. But ultimately that's the sound that you're looking for and that's really what you're trying to accomplish regardless of what finger it is that you use. And here's the exercise that we're going to work on. It's the same D scale that we did way back in lesson one, but we're going to separate each note with one of these new cuts, one of these new ornaments that we're working on rather than just using our tongue to interrupt the airflow. So here it is. And that's the scale. You can go from D to B, and you can't go beyond that because on a C sharp you have no note above that to cut with. Now, bonus exercise is a slight variation on that scale, because the cuts aren't just used to separate two notes when they're back to back, although that is one certainly effective use for it. They're also used as a transitional sound, a transitional ornament, going from one note to the next as you change. So here's exercise two. Call it a slightly more advanced exercise but it's worth it, and I think you can get it. So here it is. You see what I did? As I change from each note, using that cut to sort of accent that transition a little bit, rather than just tonguing to separate the note. All one continuous stream of air, but you use that cut to break it up. Now you may have noticed that I finished that scale, the top end of the scale, using the top finger. And that's another one of those things that I started doing because it worked for me. Try it. Try another option if you're so inclined, but on the top hand, really just the A and the B, the top two notes. I always cut with the top finger. Again, it just works for me. Then you get to the fun part, and that is working these ornaments, in this case working the cuts, into a tune you've already got. So for example, 
Let's take a look at Jim Ward's, the one we did in the last lesson. Basic melody. If we're going to add a cut, that's how I would do it. Or at least that's a couple of options for you. So that's what I want you to do is work on that tune. The other homework that we need to check out is adding these cuts into the first tune, Dawning of the Day. That nice slow tune should give you plenty of time to see where you can work in some cuts. So I'm not going to dive into that in this case, but that's one I want you to try and, and see if you can improve once you're starting to feel comfortable with this new ornament, with the cut. Because it's very important to get this locked down because it is one of the fundamental ones for the roll, which we will get to in a few weeks, I think. Uh, and that's the one where it's going to make your playing sound very stereotypically Irish. So that'll be a good time. Stick around for that. I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.